Hey folks, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video for the month of horror in October. This time, Stephen King's, or I should say, should say Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Stephen King's The Shining is more the miniseries because that adaptation is more in line with the novel, and this is not, which is why Stephen King hates it. But that miniseries, I do not like. I think it sucks. The topiary, what the fuck? Animals coming to life. I'm waiting for Edward Scissorhands to come in and kill them. I think they're goofy. I thought they were goofy in the book. I think they're goofy in that. The hedge maze, I think, works better. Yeah, Jack Nicholson is. You just say he's crazy from the start, but to me, I just thought it was Jack being Jack. And I did a more in depth review long ago. It's on my channel for those who want to hear and see a longer review. But I love this film. Uh, it's my favorite Stanley Kubrick movie. I like 2001, Full Metal Jacket, Dr. Strangelove. Was never much a fan of Clockwork Orange. The rest of it, of his filmography, I've not seen. But th this is definitely my favorite of Kubrick's. Because you have the excellent direction. You have the great shots, like the painting shot over the roads. With that creepy music, that... Wonderful score, which was then used in that shitty Cabin Fever remake f because. Fuck if I know. But I agree with Newsweek. It is an epic horror film. It has an epic grand fe feel because Stanley Kubrick fills the image the way he sees fit. And whether you like or hate Kubrick, you can't deny he was a, f he was a fucking fantastic director. He knew what the fuck he was doing. And it's, you know, yeah, some of his films would take their time, but to me, a film like this, I have no problem with. Because he's painting beautiful images. I mean, he was like a photographer, I believe, so he knew how to paint uh, a pretty picture. And you have a good score, and then you have a good cast. This is my favorite John Nicholson performance. Yeah, he's over the top, but it's fucking fun. It's entertaining. Give me the bat. Give me the bat. Wendy, darling of my life, you didn't hear me right. No, you didn't let me finish what I was saying. I said, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just going to bash your brains in. <laughs> I mean, it's just... He's fantastic in this. Of course, the Here's Johnny sequence. Him talking to the dose of the Overlook Hotel, getting a drink. You've been the caretaker always been the caretaker. And what's that to say? I mean, the famous images from the film, whether it be the, the kid on his toy, little toy vehicle, and seeing the twins in the hallway, and then images of their bloody bodies, and they're closer and closer talking to Danny. The hedge maze foot chase, where Danny leads his father to ultimately his demise the scene in the staircase the stair up the stairs that I was telling about where Wendy and I know people got pissed with her performance Shelley Duvall got on their nerves they found her annoying I didn't I was because as a kid I watched Popeye a lot so I, I thought of it as olive oil uh, maybe because, you know, I hear the stories about how Stanley Kubrick treated her like dog shit. And sadly, nowadays, I forget what interviewer was, but she really does seem like she's crazy nowadays. So that's really sad to see. And you buy her fucking scared and stressed out. And... I, f I just felt sorry for her. I guess how people found her annoying, I felt sorry for her. And, uh, so yeah, she didn't bother me like he did others. Scamming Crothers, which I guess is sort of the the false hope, because you think maybe he'll save the day, and that's cut short pretty fucking quickly. The... Pacey in the film, I don't know if nowadays people would find it too slow. I think the fucking miniseries is slow. 
And Steven Weber, he's not awful, but he's no Jack Nicholson. Rebecca DeMorney did a good job. The kid was fucking annoying, and yeah, that movie. And I understand this was a novel Stephen King was pretty partial to because it dealt with alcoholism, which is something he faced. But I'm fine with the changes Stanley Kubrick made. Just like I love the Running Man movie a lot more than the story. I love Graveyard Shift from 1990, the movie, a lot more than the shitty, well, or nothing, I should say, short story of Graveyard Shift. <clears throat> In this case, I think Stanley Tuber did a great job. And he's definitely the, the biggest credit to do it. And Jack Nicholson as the lead was fantastic because to get to see him just go full tilt and unleash and not be held back. Uh, is a joy to watch in this film. And these beautiful images of uh, when it's in the snow and these great wide shots of the house, the Overlook Hotel is its own character with how everything looked in there, the floors, the sense of isolation. You really felt they were in the middle of fucking nowhere. Uh, the little kid, Danny Lloyd, he did fine. I will say one of the only nitpicks I have with the film is when he does the red rum, red rum, and he's talking in that Tony voice. That is a little bit irritating, especially when he's yelling, red rum, red rum, red rum. It's like, oh my God. talk about scratches on your balls and yanking all the hairs out. It just, it's pretty annoying. That's one nitpick. And this is not a really nitpick, but it's called The Shining. But it seems as if there's not a lot of actual shining in the movie, which is Danny Lloyd's power, if you think about it. I mean, he uses the contact Stan and Crothers. But, like, what else does he really use the shining? And also to see his father once in a while. Like when he, his parents are fighting or something and he's seeing images. And of course that's the reason why the ghosts seem to, or whatever it is, wants him. I'd also be like, oh, he uses that at the end. I didn't think he really uses the shining power at the end. I thought he just uses his wits to outsmart his dad, but... And yeah, that's not really nitpick, just sort of an observation where nowadays you would see a lot more of The Shining being used in various ways. I don't know. It's more like the basis of the concept. And this is one of those films that I remember the first time I saw it, I was a bit confused, like the last shot of the film. But then you remember the dialogue where the guy says, you were always the caretaker here. So it's like his, he's been sort of, you know, Jack Torrance has been con sort of consumed by this hotel. I guess that's the theme where it's not, I, call, I think of it as a haunted house movie, but it doesn't feel like a haunted house movie. And I mean that in a good way. Because it makes it more unique and, and memorable. I don't know how else to explain it. Although it does feature crazy images. Is it like two people in costumes? I swear like one's giving another a blowjob or something. I think that's the point. It's like what the hell are they doing? It's that weirdness factor. Like, what the fuck? <clears throat> Stabbing Crothers when he's driving through the snow. And you see sort of the review of the Overlook Hotel through his windshield and the music rises up and you know I some people are like oh there's no ghost in the movie well he's locked in a freezer and it opens by itself how did it do that osmosis like how the fuck <laughs> so I do think of it as a haunted house type of movie but very efficiently done uh, very just beautifully photographed Wonderfully acted, in my opinion, especially Jad Nicholson's balls out, insane performance. 
memorable images and you can really tell care was taken into it that a good chunk of money was taken a part in the production as well very solid production values so yeah if you want to hear more of my in-depth thoughts the review should still be up and real quick like I guess I could say like when I did that review I'll just take a second should still be up just, just type in my username the shining six years ago holy shit it's a 20 minute review <laughs> six years ago so and fuck room 237 the documentary which is just about in my opinion a bunch of fucking lunatics showing how lunatical they are like hey there's a lot of stuff you can do with the shining let's do this documentary which show how fucking batshit insane people are fuck room 237 fuck the miniseries in my opinion this, to me this is the only shining and I know they're doing a sequel because based on the book sequel I don't know about that because isn't like Danny like he's chasing vampires or something what the fuck I don't know what the fuck but I do know <laughs> this is a movie that's worth a watch in the during the Halloween season, during the month of October. So, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you in another video later.